It's only farth to have a basic roof over your head. And mashallah, many of you have, are immigrants from India and Pakistan, and those of you who still visit those areas, and if you visit the poor areas of our home countries, you will see there are people, ten, family of ten living in one room, family of twelve living in one room. And mashallah, you have two bedroom house. That's not far, that's nothing. You have a two bedroom council apartment, council flat. Hmm? You're getting to know the community better. Hmm? <laughs> that's not far, that's nothing. Let's take your transport. You know what, Pakistan? You know, the husband is on the motorcycle. The wife, she's dangling off. She has two kids in her lap. He has one kid on his lap and one baby on the handlebar. Hmm? Yes, that is far. Your car, even if it's the small one that you think is small, is also different. The insan of ki puri zindagi mein har nafal lekar aaye, kya wo sirf us ek Allah tala ki yaad hai jo nafal aap nahi la sakte. Allah, Allah. Oh my friend, in your whole life, in your entire lifestyle. You are doing things beyond what is required, beyond the necessary. It is only when it comes to deen of Islam and zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you want to ask me the question, is it necessary or is it nothing? Hmm? Oh. Allah said in Quran, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul kuloob that know that only and only in the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only in the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will you get itminam. You know this thing is itminam. It begins with zikr, then you get itminam in kalb, then you get something called itminam in nafs. Oh, you know what happens to that person who gets itminam in nafs? You know the power of this zikr. Zikr leads to itminan in kalb, itminan in kalb leads to itminan in nafs. What is itminan in nafs that is called nafs mutmain? And what is the end of this journey? Ya ayyatuhan nafs mutmain. Ilji'i ila rabbik. Now I'll explain this in Urdu first. Anything for those who don't know Urdu, anything I say in Urdu I will always do it in English. Just for some of our enjoyment, we say something. What is it? It's an actual matter. That when you are thinking, it means that the soul of the heart and the soul of the heart are not able to take it. Allah Taala is the chain of it. One example I will tell you. Allah Taala is not able to take it without you. Allah Taala is the chain of it. He is the chain of it. He is the chain of it. He is the chain of it. اور لوٹا میرے پاس اے انسان مؤمن آپ نے اپنے قلب کو مطمئن کر دیا میرے یاد کے ساتھ آپ نے اپنے نفس مطمئن نہ کر دیا میرے یاد کے ساتھ ارجی ای ارجی آجا میرے پاس اب اس کی یہ مطلب نہیں کہ اس کی موت اس وقت آتی ہے موت اسی وقت آگی جو مقرر ہے اب سمجھو کہ جب ذکر کے بعد اتمنان قلب نفس مطمئن نہ ہو گیا ارجی ای انا لب بک رالا خطاب مل گیا اس وقت سے لے کر موت تک وہ انسان اللہ کو مراد بنتا ہے مراد بنے زندگی گزارتا ہے means that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a person gets this thing called نفسِ مطمئنہ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts yearning for that person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot wait for that person Allah ta'ala is an anxious anticipation for that person so he announced in his eternal Quran Pre-eternal Qur'an, irji'i, come back, return, return, return to Allah. You know, in ayah in Qur'an, it talks about people, may yarju liqa Allah. There are some people who yearn to meet Allah. This is that person who Allah Ta'ala is yearning to meet him. Can you imagine Allah? So the beginning of dhikr is, may yarju liqa Allah. That person who yearns to meet Allah. The end of the dhikr is that Allah is yearning to meet that person in ji e in Allah. You want to tell me that's optional? Hmm? Can you solve yourself at the Quran and say this is optional? Can we say we're mu'min and we think that's optional? Hmm? That we think that's nothing? So 
big mistake we have made. We have underestimated, underappreciated, undervalued the power and the meaning and importance of Zikrullah. And we're showing you all of this from Quran. From Quran Azim Sham. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right to tell us how important or not the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Our problem is that instead of seeking <coughs> this real itminan, instead of seeking this real itminan, we are caught up in what we call fake itminan. Fake itminan. Fake itminan means for some young people it may mean TV, it may mean music, it may mean novels, it may mean magazines, it may mean internet, it may be gossip, it may be badli, it may be gafshab. It's fake itminan, fake. It's what our Mashiach called itminan in majazi. How can you tell if something is real or something is fake? So the test is that when you do it, how long does the effect last? So you will see that if you go for this fake itminan, I'll give you two examples. The younger person maybe when they're sad or they're feeling some difficulty, right? So maybe they put on a movie. The movie lasts for two hours. The second the movie ends, the sadness comes back. And no lasting effect. It didn't last. <laughs> The second the movie ended, the second the depression came back. So what did they do? They stick another one in. Then they stick another one in. And then they just collapse. They just fall asleep in that state and they miss their pattern. When they wake up, they still don't have it, Mina. They wake up groggy and they wake up as sad and depressed as they were when they started. Give you another example that you call someone, you gossip with someone, you chat with someone. The second you put the phone down, when the women and men also, you get sad again. You don't know what to do. You call another person. <laughs> it has no effect, no lasting effect, no after effect. That's a sign it's fake itminam. And if something is real itminam, it has an effect, it has after effect. This is why Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Sahaba Ikram, Siddiqeen, Sadiqeen, whenever they have difficulty, they pray two rakats. Few minutes. Oh, but it has an effect. It has a lasting effect. It has an after effect. They would pray few minutes of salah, make few minutes of dua, and the itminan will last them for hours, for days, for weeks. That's the sign that it's real itminan. It lasted. That's itminan al hakiki. So that's why Allah Ta'ala, out of His love and mercy for us, he is inviting us to real it minam when he's telling us Allah is giving us the best nuskha, the best recipe for it minam. The best thing. And we are leaving that best thing and trying to find it in all the ways. And when it comes to zikr of Allah SWT, we say, oh well, that's nafam. What the nafam? Daimi Allah. Daimi. Look at another ayah that tells him in Quran of him. Ya ayyuhal nadina abudu dhikrullah dhikran kathira. Ya ayyuhal nadina abudu. You know al nadina abudu. This is also a beautiful way Allah Ta'ala talks to us in Quran. We should be so happy that Allah Ta'ala calls us al nadina abudu. It comes in tafsir in a particular ayah of Surah Bakara that the Bani Israel, in their Torah, in the book, their Wahid that Allah Ta'ala sent to them, Allah Ta'ala called them, addressed them as Al-Nadina Amru twice, just two times. And they were so honored. Why were they honored? You know, if you call somebody a doctor, it means you were saying that I believe and certify that you know medicine. When you call somebody an economist, you were saying I believe and certify you know economics. When you call somebody Qari, you're saying, I believe, I certify that you know Tajweed and Qirat. So when Allah SWT calls us Al-Nadina Amalu, Allah Ta'ala is saying that I certify and verify that you have Iman in me. So they got so happy. And that's what they used to say, these words are in, preserved in Quran, their words. They used to say, Nahnu Abna'ullahi wa Ahibba'uhu We are the children of God and we are His beloveds. Jews, Bani Shri used to say that. 
Why? Just because Allah Ta'ala called them Al-Nadina Amru twice in Torah. And Alhamdulillah in Quran, Allah Ta'ala has called the Ummah of Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Al-Nadina Amru over 70 times. So actually when Allah Ta'ala says, Ya Ayyuhal Nadina Amru, it should melt our heart. Oh my Allah, you're calling me? You're calling me Al-Nadina Amru? Like a mother when she is being very nice, she says, Oh my dear beloved son. I say, Ba'e mere putta. Ba'e mere putta. When Allah Ta'ala is saying, Ya ayyuh ladina amru, it's the rohani equivalent of Allah Ta'ala saying, Ba'e mere putta. It's soft, gentle way of calling us. It's meant to melt our heart. And every single one of us is Allah Dina Amru. This is the basic entry level. So what does Allah Ta'ala say to all of us? Not O Sufiya, O Oliya, to all Allah Dina Amru. What does Allah Ta'ala say in Quran? Udhkurullah dhikran kathira. That you must make zikr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and you must make zikr a lot, a whole lot. Second mistake people make. First was that, zikr is nafu, no need to do it. Second mistake some people make. They say that zikr is... They say that it's not, I just can't, it's not the way I am. It's not in my temperament. And sometimes they think this because they're doing khidmat of deen. So the alim who is mudarris, he says that, look, mere to ilmi mizaj, ilmi. Allah Akbar. Ajeeb, Allah ki shan. Do chaar har par liya. Or ilmi mizaj, or ke mizaj. He says that I have a temperament of knowledge. I'm, I'm close to, I'm a person of knowledge. Ask me to teach, ask me to write. I can't do zikr. Same thing, the teacher of hips. Same thing, some imam. I'm not saying about any particular person, right? I'm just saying generally. Sometimes a person is doing khidmat, sometimes a person is doing da dawa, a person is doing tabliq. Say, so, Mera Mizhaji Nei. Okay. No problem. I can accept it. Aapke Mizhaj Nei. Aap kaun or aapke Mizhaj kaun is Qur'an ke firman ke samne? Aapko ne pata hai ke Allah Ta'ala ne deen islam ne itni kuwad rakhi hai ke aap apne mizaj ko badal sakte ho. Balke ee insaan aap is dunya mein aai is liye hai ke aap apne mizaj ko aap ke mutabik badle aur aap ke mizaj lekar chale. Your temperament and your own personality, your affinity, what standing is that in the command, in face of the commandment of Allah Swam Ta'ala? You have been created on earth for this very reason to change your ways and make it according to the feelings of Qur'an. And Allah Ta'ala addressed Al-Nadina Amunu. You know Qur'an and Deen of Islam is what we call Deen of Fitrat. It means Qur'an and Deen, they were made for Insan. And Insan was made for Qur'an and Deen. There's a perfect match. Perfect match, perfect match. So actually every one of us has the ability to do zikr. For some of us it may be what we call latent, it may be dormant, it may be recessive, it may be subdued, it may be hidden. We just need to activate it. That's called mujahada. We have to make ourselves, force ourselves to do it in the beginning. That's called mujahada. But it's there. Don't think it's not there. Every one of us has that ability. So second mistake, we should never make this mistake. Some people inside the soul make it. They go to Shaykh and say, Shaykh, I don't have a lot of zikr, I don't have a lot of zikr. 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 I've seen big ulama talk like this to my Shaykh. One of, one of the most senior ulama in Karachi, I won't take his name, he came to Shaykh and said this in front of me. He said, I don't have a lot of zikr. So you have to do more zikr. Now Shaykh doesn't have a lot of zikr. That Shaykh, I... <laughs> My temperament is not, I can't do zikr. <laughs> Are you Alladina Amru or not? Do you want to be Alladina Amru or not? Can you take this ayah out of Quran? If you think it's not in your mizaj, what are you saying? That this is my musaf, my copy of Quran. I take scissors and I cut these words out of Quran. Do it if you can. 
Do it. Cut it out. Cut it out of Quran. Can anybody dare to do that? Hmm? Can anybody dare to do that? Amal of faith? No way. No way. So this Quran is for us, sent by Allah SWT to us. If we don't do amal on these teachings of Quran, there is no other human community left on earth other than Muslims who are going to follow Quran. And on top of that, what did Allah Ta'ala say? Dhikran. Let me explain to you, Uzkurullah first. What does it mean to remember Allah? What does that mean? So there are many ways you can understand this. First way is that remembering Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala means that you should bring Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala back into your life. Bring Allah Ta'ala back into your husband-wife relationship. Bring Allah Ta'ala back into your parent-child relationship. Bring Allah Ta'ala back into your sibling relationship. Brother-sister relationship. Bring Allah Ta'ala back into your fellow Muslim relationship. Or bring Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala back into your Abdurrab relationship. Bring Allah Ta'ala back into your Ibadah. Bring Allah Ta'ala back into your Dua. Bring Allah Ta'ala back into your Salah. Bring Allah Ta'ala back into your Kalam. Uzkurullah al-Dhikran kathira That remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Bring Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala back. How much should I remember Him? How much should I bring Him back? Allah Ta'ala said, Dhikran kathira Allah Ta'ala commanded sabr in Qur'an, didn't say kafir. Allah Ta'ala commanded tawakkul in Qur'an, didn't say kafir. Allah Ta'ala commanded shukr in Qur'an, didn't say kafir. The only place where Allah Ta'ala said kafir for a sifat of the mu'mineen was dhikr. That you have to make dhikr abundantly, abundantly. A lot of dhikr, lots of dhikr. And elsewhere in the Qur'an Allah Ta'ala explained, that who are the munafiqeen? Allah Ta'ala describes that in their salah, لَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا That they don't remember Allah Ta'ala inside their salah except a little bit. Allah Akbar, the munafiqeen are better than us. Today the Muslim says that I don't remember Allah in my salah at all. Allah Ta'ala saying munafiqeen in their salah, they remember Allah Ta'ala a little. Mu'mineen remember Allah Ta'ala a lot and us we, remember, we can't remember Allah Ta'ala at all in our salah. We don't understand believing this dhikr, what was the consequence of it? What happened to us when we lost the dhikr? We lost our feeling in salah. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, is salah to the dhikri, that you should establish the salah for a purpose, for a maqsad. And that is my remembrance. Allah Ta'ala's remembrance. Allah Ta'ala saying, my remembrance. And we pray in namaz as salam without dhikr. I think I explained it to you once before in Rochdale, that this is what I call like sugar-free ice cream. Nobody would like sugar-free ice cream. You take the sugar out, such an important ingredient, and no child would like to eat the ice cream. They won't enjoy it. Just like that, me and you don't enjoy salah because we're praying liquor free salah. Liquor free salah. What you have in this country, I saw what we call diet, we call it zero. Sprite zero. Hmm? We're praying the mouth of zero. Salah zero. Empty of the zikr of Allah SWT. Let me show you how much of a problem that is. Now you tell me that person is called. They make wudu. They come into the masjid. They say takbir al tahrima. They won't speak. They won't eat. They won't drink. Their body is doing dhikr. Their tongue is doing dhikr. Saying subhana, rabbi al adeem, saying surah fatiha, saying tasbihat. Then they go into sajda, the highest level of bodily dhikr. They're talking to their Allah, subhana, rabbi al Allah. And even then they say that in my sajda I feel nothing. How hard must that heart be that wuzu could not melt it? Coming into the masjid, the home of the mercy of Allah SWT could not melt it. Doing dhikr with its body could not melt it. Doing dhikr with tongue could not melt it. Falling down in sajda could not melt it. Such a hard heart. 
such a hard heart, long work, I'm feeling sadam, I'm feeling sadda, I'm feeling dog, I'm feeling father. This happened to us because we stopped making zikr. The more you make zikr outside salah, the more you will remember Allah inside salah. The golden rule. And the less you remember Allah outside salah, the less you will remember Allah Ta'ala inside salah. That's the proof. And if you don't remember Allah Ta'ala at all outside salah, you will not be able to remember Him at all inside salah. Yes? You won't be able to remember him at all inside Salah. So Allah Ta'ala said in Quran of Kareem that we have to do Zikri Kathir. Zikri Kathir. Remember Allah Ta'ala a lot. A lot. Then I want to show you the rest of this passage in Quran Surah Asal. Beautiful passage in Quran. Many of us may have heard this first sentence, Ya ayyuhal ladina amri kurullah adhikran kathira. But Allah Ta'ala continues, whole passage. Second Allah Ta'ala says, وَسَمْبِحُوهُ بُقْدَةً وَأَسِيرًا وَسَمْبِحُوهُ You should do the tasbih of Allah. That's you know when we say Subhan, Subhanallah, Subhan Rabbi. What does it mean to say Subhan? Subhan means we are saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so glorious, so wondrous, so amazing, so perfect, that He is free and pure from all flaws and defects. He is absolutely free and pure from even the possibility, hypothetical possibility of flaw and defect. And He is so pure and perfect and immaculate. He has all of the wondrous attributes, every single perfection is found in Him. The source of all beauty is found in Him. The source of all good and beauty emanates from Him, Subhanallah. Always remember how amazing your Allah is. Simple English, my Allah is amazing. And you have to remember this one, Bukhrata wa Asila, means morning and evening. So when in Urdu, when the Mashaikh talk about Subar, Sham, Kimabullah, it's in Quran. That you should remember Allah Ta'ala morning and evening. Morning and evening. You should do Tasbih. Morning and evening. Part of that dhikr kathir is morning and evening. Okay. Up till now Allah Ta'ala gave us the command. It would have been enough. Allah Ta'ala, you are our master. You are our Lord. Whatever you command us to do, we do it. But Allah Akbar, this is an ajeeb ayat. Allah Ta'ala apna ta'aruf karwate. SubhanAllah. Allah Ta'ala mu'mineen ko apna ta'aruf karwate taaki wa dhaakireen ban jai. Wa dhaakireen Allah wa kathira wa dhaakiraat wa ala mu'mineen ban jai. Allah Ta'ala introduces Himself, describes Himself. Huwa. Huwa alladhi yusalli alaykum. Huwa, who is that Allah? Who are you are being asked to do the kathir of? Alladhi, he is that being. Yusalli alaykum. Who is sending salawat on you. Wa malaikatuhu. And his angels will also send salawat on you. Ya Allah, these are same words you use in Quran for Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Same Allah. In the same Quran said, Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. Same Allah in the same Quran is telling Allah Amalu, if you do the correct kathir, who will nadi yusalli alaykum wa malaikatuhu. Same Allah, same Allah, same salawat. Yes, the same Allah who sends the same salawat on Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu same Allah is going to send same salawat on Allah bin Amr. That if a person receives those salawat, how could you not get itminan? If you receive those salawat, now you tell me is dhikr optional? 
Is it optional to get the salawat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, same salawat that he sends on the Prophet on your account? Is that optional? I said, well, malaika to who? Malaika is Jama'at Alam includes all angels. Means that same Jibreel alayhi salam, whose otherwise his job was to bring a wahi and revelation to the hearts of the Prophets and Biya, that same Jibreel is going to send salawat on the Allah bin Allah. Did you ever think like that? That my Allah Ta'ala is sending salawat on me? Angel Jibreel is sending salawat on me. And all of us are saying, this is what Allah Ta'ala is trying to give us in Quran. you have underestimated what Allah Ta'ala wants to give. Allah Ta'ala is wale wale Allah Ta'ala wants to give, He wants to bestow, that's why it's called Wahab. You know, Wahab is like a gift, a bestow. And he is Wahab, super gift giver. Hmm? Super gift giver. And what is the super gift he wants to give? That he will send salawat and all of his angels will send salawat. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Then next, Allah is not done. Subhanallah, Allah is He's not done. Nowhere near done. And what will happen when you get this salawat? لِيُبْنِجَكُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ Allah Ta'ala, and by means of this salawat, He's going to take you out, O Allah Dina Amanu, when you do dhikr kathir He will take you out مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ from all of the darknesses. إِلَى النُّورِ to that one نُورِ نُكْتَ It's not مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى الْأَنْوَارِ It's not مِنَ الظُّلْمِ إِلَى النُورِ It's مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُورِ means there's so many darknesses, so many types of sin, so many varieties of sin. There's so much type of sadness, so much hurt, so much disloyalty, so much betrayal, so much disappointment in this world. Allah is saying, Minadullah, don't worry when you do dhikr kathir my salawat and my angel salawat will come down on you. They will take you out from all of those things. And where will I end up, Allah? In Anur, Anur. That same Allah Ta'ala who Anur is one of his names. He said, I will bring you into Anur. Oh, I will bring you into light, spiritual light, radiance. That same Nur that on the day of judgment when Mu'mineen will be walking, unbelievers will beg for them, give us some of that Nur. Oh, and the voice will tell them, you can't get that Nur in this day. This Nur was to be gotten in the world. <coughs> How is that Nur to be gotten in the world? Here it's coming. In the Nur, by doing dhikr kathir That Nur that will benefit us on the Day of Judgment. That Nur that the unbelievers will be yearning for on the Day of Judgment. That Nur that the caller will call out could have only been gotten in the world. It's going to be gotten through these type of things. Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran, we take you out min al in the nur. So Allah Ta'ala is sending, the transmitter is on. We have turned the receiver off. We have turned the receiver off. So Allah, I don't, I don't need your salawat. I don't need the salawat. It's options, nothing, nothing. Nothing, Allah Akbar. Can you imagine transmitter is on but receiver is off? <laughs> so sad. So sad. If only we could learn to put our receiver on. You know on your cell phone, you always want the signal. Huh? You look at your number of bars. If you have three bars instead of five, you move. <laughs> Pershan's signal is weak. You move, you change your position, you touch the window, you touch it, you make yourself an antenna. Hmm? Didn't you think, what about my signal with receiving Allah Ta'ala's salawat and anwarat and fiyuzat and waridat and the jamiyat? What about that signal? What about that reception? Hmm? What about doing something to improve that signal, that reception? Allah Ta'ala wants to give. And we have to become people who are willing to take. 
for the love of Christ. And what's not done? He's not done it. So there is a little body in the new. Now what happened? So the person was first time Allah Dina Amanu. Second they should dikri kathir. Third Allah Ta'ala and Malaika sent salawat on their heart. Fourth Allah Ta'ala took them out from Zulamat to Nur. Then now they're no longer just Allah Dina Amanu. Now their next level that is called Mu'mineen. And then Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا For those who study Arabic grammar know, Ta'ala comes from istimrar. Mudawam, hmm? for perpetual. Bakana bil mu'minina rahima means that Allah Ta'ala is always, always infinitely merciful on His believers. Subhanahu What will we get when we do amal on this ayat? The infinite mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala always. The infinite mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala always. Makana bil mu'mineen rahimah Still Allah Ta'ala is not done. Allah Akbar. Still Allah Ta'ala is not done. He wants to give even more. He wants to give even more. Because all of this so far was about this world. Taking out Dulamat and Tanur. Getting the rahmah of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. So then Allah Ta'ala mentions the Day of Judgment. Tahiyyatahum yawma yalqawnahu salam Subhanallah. They are greeting. You know, in this world, when a special corporate guest comes, they go and they do meet and greet. Hmm? This person is now so special in Allah Ta'ala's eyes, he has become from the dhaqirin Allah kathira wa dhaqira, from the male believers who remember Allah abundantly, or the female believers who remember Allah Ta'ala abundantly. So what did Allah Ta'ala say in Quran? Allah Ta'ala says the way this person will be greeted, the greeting they will be given on what day? And it's not called Yawm Jaza for these people. It's not called Yawm al Hisar for these people. Allah Akbar. Even look at the way Allah Ta'ala describes this day. Yawm al Yalqawnahu. For them it's Yawm al Lika. It's not Yawm Jaza. It's not Yawm al Hisar. Think something. For these people it's Yawm al Lika. It's not the day of reckoning. It's not the day of judgment. Yawm al Yalqawnahu. The day they meet their Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. The day they have mulaqat, yes, that's what it means. The day they have mulaqat with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will greet them first and Allah ta'ala will say salam. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, the dost, we will give you this salam to this world. We will give you all our happiness to this salam. We will give you all our happiness to this salam. We have been put on this earth. What else? Why else do we exist? Is there any other reason that we exist other than to get the salam from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Is there any other purpose in existence? Is there any other treasure in the universe? <laughs> and now you imagine <coughs> that person whose day of judgment, day of judgment, begins with getting salam from Allah. The end can only be judgment. There's no way. This insan ki ibtida Allah Ta'ala ki greeting ki salam ke saath ho us ke intiha jannat ke ilawa nahi ho sakta balki humari feeling is hai se hai ki us ke intiha jannat ul firdos ke ilawa hoi se hai. No way. If it begins with salam it ends with jannat ul firdos. You know what jannat ul firdos is? Jannat ul firdos is abadi sahab. You know one thing is Madani Sahabi, one thing is Abadi Sahabi. Madani Sahaba, none of us had the opportunity to be the companion of Sayyidina Rasulullah in his life on this earth. But if you make it into Jannatul Firdaus, you will be his Sahaba for all of eternity. You will be his companion in Jannatul Firdaus forever. Forever, Allah, Allah. That's what Allah Allah wants to give. If Allah Ta'ala wanted to, He could have made Anbiya in separate Jannah. No. Jannah for those who are open to Ghair Anbiya. Open. Admissions is still open. Application is still going on. But merciful Allah. To be a Sahaba forever. Oh. That's why Allah Ta'ala created us. You know what it means to be Ummah Mustafa? 
That's just a come for Jamaat. Lucky Monday. The Muslim means that you can become Abadi Sahabi in Jannatul Firdos. Tahiyyatahum Yawma Yalakonahu Salam. Even then Allah has not done. Oh. Even now, still Allah has not done. Next Allah Ta'ala says, and that was just Yawm al and what happens after? So in dunya, salawat and taking out from zulamat and nur and rahmat and mercy. On day of meeting Allah, salam. And what about after? وَأَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَرِيمًا And Allah Ta'ala said that, and Allah Ta'ala has prepared for them. And Allah Ta'ala has prepared for them a tremendously generous, everlasting, unfading reward. And you know Qur'an, by the way, you know Qur'an is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's been there forever and will be there forever. So when Allah ta'ala says, وَأَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَرِيمًا Allah ta'ala is saying that these Allah-Zina Amanu of mine who are ذَاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ kathira For past, forever, I have been preparing for them. For ages and ages, for infinite tea, I have been preparing for them. They did my zikr for 50 years, maybe 70 years. I have been preparing for them for billions, trillions, infinite years. And what have I prepared for them? Some ajr that will last forever, that will last billions and trillions and infinite years. This is what Allah wants to give us. And what was the command that he said before he mentioned all of these things? Ya ayyuhalladina amanu uzkurullah uzkurullah zikran kaseerah That is why the Messiah keeps saying to do zikr. Of course, I think he's saying zikr, zikr, zikr. Allah came on. This is why the Messiah tells to do zikr. Third mistake people make. They think that khidmat can be a substitute for this zikr. No, it can't. No, it can't. There's no substitution. There's no substitution. Maybe the Mawlana Mufti thinks that the Tadris and Fatwa, he thinks that teaching and writing can be substituted for zikr. No, it can't. It can't. Maybe the Imam or the Hifs instructor thinks that teaching, Hifs, or leading prayer can be substituted for zikr. No, it can't. It cannot. Even the Mujahid who thinks that jihad can be a substitute for zikr? No, it can't. The da'i tabliq who thinks that da'a and tabliq can be a substitute for zikr? No, it can't. I also prove that you from Qur'an. That without zikr you can't even really do khidmat. Allah Ta'ala says in Qur'an, La tute man awfanna qalbahu an dhikrin. What do I mean? For any khidmat of deen, you need for it to be successful, that person to listen to you. If you're an ustad, you need the student to listen to you. If you're the alim, you need the listener to obey you. Follow your fatwa. Huh? If you're a dai, giving dawah or the bleed, you need the other person to listen to you. If you're the sheikh, you need the marid to listen to you. For all areas of khidmat of deen, you need the person you are trying to bring to deen to listen to you. And Allah Ta'ala has said in Qur'an, La tute. Allah has announced in Qur'an, Do not obey, do not listen, do not follow. Man, every single such person. That alfalna qalbahu, that we have made their kalb empty on dhikrina from our dhikr. And I already showed you in our salah, one is, are we praying a salah of dhikr kathir? Are we praying a salah of dhikr kalil? Or are we praying a salah of ghafla? Ghafla is that word in Arabic that means that if somebody says, I don't remember Allah at all in salah, that's ghafla. It means heart is ghafla. Remember I showed you heart? Standing in wudu, going in sajda, still not feeling Allah. That's called ghafla. That's exactly called and you know what Allah Ta'ala said about Ghafirin? This was about Ghafirin. 
وَسَلْ اللَّهُ تَصِيمًا غَافِرًا لِلْقُرْآنِ اللَّهُ تَكْبِيرًا أُولَئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ They're like animals. بَلْهُمْ أَذَلْ But they're worse than animals because an animal was created like an animal. Oh, mu'min, you were insan and mu'min and you still chose to be a ghafil. You had insan and mu'min, you still chose to be an animal. You're even worse than an animal. Ula'ika kal an'am balhum azal. Balhum azal. But alhamdulillah, those people who do dhikr, they are really doing the khidmat. Real khidmat. Let me explain this to you. When we do khidmat to deen, let me give you an example. There are two types of medicine. For example, if a person has a cold, you know cold or flu, you can take a medicine that can suppress the symptoms. Let's say like a cough drop. You take a cough drop, it soothes your sore throat. That's one type of medicine. The call gives symptomatic relief. And there's another type of medicine, and that actually cures the illness. So when people like us, we do khidmat the deen, it's not a substitute for zikr, it's the cough drop. Do you see it? The Allah will say that when I'm in the madrasa, I'm completely fine. The second I go home and go out, I lose my zikr. It means that he's teaching with the cough drop. You know, as long as you're sucking the cough drop, the throat is fine. The second the cough drop ends, the sore throat comes back. The person goes on Umrah. As long as he was there, he was fine. Second he came back, loses it again. The brother who goes on the link, the second he was come back, he loses it again. The brother who goes khidmat of shaykh, the second he stops doing khidmat, he loses it again. That's the cough drop. Not against it, it's a good thing. Just like I also take cough drops, literally and figuratively. <laughs> but why not also go for the cure? The cure is zikrullah. If we become zakirin kathira, zakirin Allah kathira, then our khidmat won't be khidmat of deen. Our khidmat will be tajdeed of deen, ihya of deen. The people who have zikr in their heart, whatever branch of khidmat they're doing, they're doing the work of nabuwat. The work of the Anbiya and Mursaleen. They're doing the greatest act of Ibana on earth. Hazrat Mulani Ilyas, he was amongst the Zakirin. So his work was the work of the Anbiya and Mursaleen. Our Akabir ulama and Darulam Diyaban, they were Zakirin. So when they did the Tadris and Ifta and Tasneef and Talib, their teaching and writing and all of that, they were doing the work of the Buddha. Hazrat Mulani asked him, thank you, Marfat, that he put ilm and dhikr together. Some foolish people, they wonder why he should have given them separate numbers that are so important. They don't understand. It's like Imam Munifra, sometimes he says something so deep that a person who initially uses their mind, they don't understand it. Hazrat Mulani asked him, thank you, Marfat, that ilm and dhikr are inseparable, inseparable things. Inseparable. And mashallah, he had both. When you read his biography, it was big Sufi. He did so much zikr, so much zikr. Allahu Akbar Kamiran. Rehm Allahu Ta'ala Nubwad Allahu Akbar Kamiran. These were Zakirin. Then Allah Ta'ala took every khidmat from them. Every khidmat. Khidmat of Tafsir, khidmat of Hadid, khidmat of Fiqh, khidmat of Dawah. Khidmat of community leadership has a money not valid. Allah Ta'ala took every khidmat from them. And for them it wasn't kafra. No. For them it was real fikr, work of Nabut. They were the living embodiments of the hadith. al ulama u wa al-anbiya. They were the real heirs and legatees and successors of the prophets and messengers. So, that was the third misconception that Khidmat can be a substitute for zikr. Khidmat can never ever be a substitute for zikr. Okay. Now the second thing we have to tell you tonight is practical. This was all the importance of zikr from Quran. Now practically I'm going to tell you tonight just three types of zikr to do. Three types of zikr to do. Number one. 
number one type of liquor is called the Musnoon Du'as. Musnoon Du'as. But you have to say them with feeling. You have to say the Sunnah Du'a, not just with the Sunnah, with the words. You have to learn to make the Sunnah Du'a, listen carefully. You have to say the Sunnah Du'a, not just with the Sunnah words, you have to say the Sunnah Du'a with the Sunnah heart. It's the highest Sunnah. What does it mean? So for example, when Sayyidina Rasulullah used to eat, afterwards he used to make Du'a. Let me even give you first word of that Du'a. Alhamdulillah. When Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say Alhamdulillah, he wasn't saying it because it was a Muslim thing to say. He wasn't saying it, yeah, Muslim du'a box, I have to say Alhamdulillah. No. It was the feeling of his heart that even though Allah Ta'ala has given me maybe a meager, humble meal of coarse barley bread and thin gravy, and even that after one or two or three days, but his feeling in his heart was overflowing with the praise of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It feels to me as if he felt that Allah Ta'ala was hand feeding him every look. And his heart was saying Alhamdulillah. So you don't have to memorize more Muslim du'as. First learn the, one, the ones that you already memorized. Learn how to say them with your heart. Your heart should feel the praise of Allah when you eat. And then you should say Alhamdulillah. That will be du'a with zikr. You see zikr is all about feelings. All about feeling the feelings for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what zikr is. And so when the Mashai teaches zikr, they're teaching us how to feel the feelings we're supposed to feel for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever Muslim du'as you already know, start saying them from the heart. How many of us can say we say them from the heart? Most of us don't remember to say it from the tongue. The heart should feel praise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what you have to work on. That is called the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so many Muslim du'as like that. Whichever one, however many you know, you know their wordings. Learn the meanings. You can't feel the feelings unless you know the meanings. Right? Learn the meanings, the translation. And then the real task is to start feeling the feelings of those du'as. If, inshallah, you can say those du'as with feeling, inshallah, you will feel a big change in your life. That will be the dhikrullah. You will really feel that you're remembering Allah. How many times do we eat in a day? We have three meals and snacks and nuts and so many things. And imagine if you said Alhamdulillah with feeling every one of those times, you would already be well on your way to becoming a person of dhikr kathir you just lose the opportunity. It's kind of doesn't mean you have to quit your job or leave your university. No. You have opportunities in your daily life to remember Allah SWT and become a person of the kind of But you let those opportunities go by. You wasted away. You don't have to leave your work. You don't have to leave whatever khidmat of deen you're doing. The zikr goes along with that. You know, like sometimes we explain it to the children, that when you have vanilla ice cream, and you put a lot of chocolate sprinkles, it's as good as chocolate. It's as good as chocolate. So you keep all your work and khidmat there, you have to just sprinkle it with the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So first way to do that is the Muslim du'as of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Second way. Second way is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 24-7. So second and third way I'll just explain to you using some verses of Quran. Second way, Allah Ta'ala said, this ayah, Allah Hazakina Kathira. Second ayah, Wazakina Allah Kathira. Third ayah, Allahina Yadkurun Allah Ayaman Wakudan wa Allah Jidu bihim. That they are people who are the Mu'mini. There are people who remember Allah Ta'ala when they're standing, when they're sitting, and when they're lying down. What does it mean? 
you only have one of three physical postures. You're always going to be either standing or sitting or lying down. So what did it mean Allah Ta'ala saying in Quran that they remember Allah Ta'ala at all times? Fourth ayah to make you understand the second type of the curtain. Allah Ta'ala says in Quran, رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْءٌ أَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ رِجَالٌ مَرْدِ مَوْمِ رِجَالٌ Real, strong, spiritual human beings are such people that neither trade or commerce it means nothing in this world it means even when they're engaged in the world even when they're earning the world even when they're in dunya activity even that cannot distract them from the zikr of Allah Ta'ala even for one second. What a difference. We are people that in the heart of ibadah we can't remember Allah. Sajda. And they are people that in the heart of worldly activity in job and career and shop and university they can't forget Allah. It's a gap, right? It's a journey we have to make. And Allah Ta'ala made a second ishara in this. That this type of zikr is not zikr of the tongue. Because in baya and tijara, your tongue is buying, selling, negotiating, haggling. Just sit with a businessman, he's got one phone here, another phone here, ordering the shopkeeper here. The tongue is busy. His tongue is in dunya. It's his tongue that is doing the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His heart is doing the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How to do the second zikr? I mean, this second zikr is 24 hours a day. Even when you're working in your shop, in your factory, in your university, in your college. The way to do the zikr is before you start any activity. Before you open your shop, before you start your class, before you enter your office, before you go to the clinic. For even one minute, one minute, Make your heart feel, feel in your heart, any feeling for Allah SWT, any feeling. Feel some love for Allah SWT, feel fear of Allah SWT. Think about any of the Asma Husna, Allah is al Kareem. He's so generous with me, He's given me so much. Allah is al sitar I'm about to teach and Allah has hidden so many of my sins from the people in front of me. Remember any of the Asma Husna, remember any ayat of Qur'an. Allah with you wherever you are. Feel it. Feel the companionship of Allah. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Feel the good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Feel any one of those feelings for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for one or two minutes and then start what you're doing. Then whatever worldly activity you're doing, when you're doing it, during it, check your heart. And say, have you lost the feelings for Allah completely? And most of people say, yes, I got so absorbed in what I'm doing, I'm so involved in what I totally forgot Allah. So pause. Pause just for 20, 30 seconds. Again, try to feel a feeling. Any feeling from the small time, feel a feeling. Then go back to what you're doing. You keep, you keep checking your heart. Keep feeling the feelings for Allah Ta'ala. If you keep doing this throughout the day, and you do this practice and exercise, even just for a few days or a couple of weeks, you'll find, insha'Allah ta'ala, a big change in your heart. And if you keep reminding your heart of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there will come a day that your heart reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. You will be ghafil, and your heart will all of a sudden tell her that. Hmm? Your heart will remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third, we have to make the Third of the three ways we're telling you tonight, many ways of doing the Right? Third of the three ways for tonight. This is a special type of dhikr. This you cannot do 24 hours. This you cannot do along with working or studying or driving or being in the bazaar. That was the second one. This number three requires special attention. Special. So this one, remember Bukrata wa Asila? This one you can do, let's say, 10 minutes in the morning, morning, daytime, and 10 minutes evening, nighttime. That's it. You, in the beginning, you can't do it more than that. You won't be able to do it more than that. <coughs> this is it mentioned in the Quran by Allah Subhanahu in these eyes. Number one, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ And make dhikr and remember your Rabb inside yourself. تَذَرُّ عَنْ With humility. 
he felt them silently, secretly, without any statement, without any audible noise. Second ayah, and remember the name of your love. And be so lost in the remembrance of that name that you exclude everything else out and you're only remembering his name. This is a special gift Allah Ta'ala gave us which is called Isme Azam. And the Isme Azam of Allah Ta'ala is nothing other than Isme Zab, Isme Jalala, Allah. You see Allah Ta'ala could have told us in Quran and what could have been just Oh, Bismillah. Billahi Rahman Rahim. Then I begin with Allah. No. Bismillah. Bismillah. You begin with the name of Allah. Allah says in the Quran, Tabalaka Smu Rabbik. Means Tabalaka Ismu Rabbik. The full of Baraka is the name. Just even the name of your Rabb is full of Baraka. Let alone the Zat of your Rabb. Let alone your Rabb himself. So this name. This gifted name that Allah gave us, Allah. Allah has said in Quran that this name has barakah in it. Allah Ta'ala said, start everything in your life with this name. Sayyidina Rasulullah sometimes has deed that everything that is done with this name will have khair in it. So we have to tap into the barakah of this name by doing dhikr of this name. Then Allah Ta'ala said in Quran, Another beautiful ayah. This is the niyat that you make when you make this third type of dhikr. And that ayah is Fad Kuruni Al Kurkum. Kurban Dayas Ummaka. Fad Kuruni. You should make the dhikr of me. Ya Allah, we are your servants. Of course we should make dhikr of you. But Agya Kya Firmaya, next Allah Ta'ala said, I will make zikr of you. Ya Allah, you are going to make zikr of me? Me? This is what should melt your heart. You don't feel Quran, feel the feelings of Quran. You're going to make zikr of little old me? You're going to make zikr of sinning me? You know I did that sin and you're still going to do zikr of me? You know I was disloyal to you, you're still going to make zikr of me? Sadhkuruni azkurkum. Allah said to you make zikr of me and I will make zikr of you. Allah. Is this optional? Is this nothing? Is this nothing? Allah Ta'ala doing dhikr of you, you view that as nothing. It's not your mizaz that Allah Ta'ala does dhikr of you? Hmm? You have those who say it's not my mizaz that I do dhikr of him. Is it not your mizaz that he should do dhikr of you? It's incredible Allah. Such an incredible Allah Swt. And jitna humara dhikr na ke se, utna hi unka dhikr kamar hai. No matter how mm, insufficiently, weakly, we may offer our zikr. Allah Ta'ala is going to offer zikr the way He does zikr. Kama yuliku sha'nu. As befits His might and majesty. And that is kamil zab, kamil sifat, kamil zikr. And where does that come? Allah explains in Quran. May yu'min billahi yahdi kalbu. Same Allah. If to send wahi on kulub of anbiya, same Allah sends his hidayah and zikr on the kulub of the Allah bin Amr. His hearts, spiritual hearts. In this third type of zikr, this is what we will practice inshallah before we get dua. This is called muraqamah zikr. Muraqamah. Make it two way. Allah is raqib on us. Muraqamah means make it two way. Allah is intensely aware of us. Make yourself intensely, exclusively aware of it. This you can practice 10 minutes morning, daytime, 10 minutes evening or night. <coughs> the way to do it, and when we practice it, I'll explain to you. So before we begin do that practice, and I'll just end by asking <coughs> you the power end of zikr. What is the end of zikr? So that you get to see just what is the final outcome. What is the final outcome of the zikr? 
Armashayak has explained this using two terms, two terms. One is called Fanaya Kalb, and the second is called Fanaya Nafs. What does Fanaya Kalb mean? What happens is when you make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you increase in your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your heart starts feeling the feelings of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fanaya Kalb means that that person who makes so much dhikr, that now their heart is absorbed with the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, what happened was the mistake we made that we let our heart remain empty by not doing zikr. And just like the function of the eyes is to see, the function of the ears is to hear, the function of the heart is to love. If you leave your heart empty of the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it will become weak or empty in the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then some other love will come in. Unlawful love, unlawful lust, unlawful passion. Whether it's just a passing fancy, or whether you get trapped, you will have love for ghayr Allah. It's like a room. A room is either has light or has darkness. There's no third possibility. The kalb either has the nur of the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or it will have the darkness of love for ghayr So when a person does so much dhikr and kafir, what happened? They filled up their kalb with love for Allah. There's no space now. No space for Shaitan to put his Muslim sign. It's full. It's full. No vacancy. <laughs> no vacancy sign. We are doing dhikr kathir. That's what it means, Fanai Kal. What is the benefit of having Fanai Kal? This person can no longer disobey Allah. This is what stops a person from sin. They don't sin because they love Allah Ta'ala so much that they can't disobey. That's why the Arabs say in the Arab Quran, the Arab proverb. That the lover is obedient to whomsoever he loves. So when this person has so much dhikr, then they get so much love. When they have so much love, they say, I, I love Allah too much to disobey. Isn't that exactly what we want? When your wife does something you don't like, sometimes maybe you say to her, that if you loved me, you wouldn't have done it. She gives every excuse. She says, no, but this, but this, but this, you disobey them. If you loved me, you wouldn't have done it. That's what she said. If you really loved me, huh? <laughs> if you really loved me, you wouldn't have done it. That's what Allah Ta'ala is going to say on the Day of Judgment. If you really loved me, you wouldn't have done it. And I told you to really love me. Allah Ta'ala says in Quran, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُمْبًا لِلَّهِ Same, Allah Dina Amanu ki baati chal rahi hai. Khususi baat nahi hai. The Allah Dina Amanu are extremely intense, intensely extreme in their love for Allah SWT. They told us this is what we should get. And when they get that Fanai Kaw, they're not able to do sin. But there's one thing that's left, that's the nafs. But still sometimes the nafs wants sin. So the person doesn't do sin, but sometimes they feel the temptation for sin. They feel the inclination towards sin. So they have to do more liquor. And this I'm talking a lot of liquor. This is after 15, 20 years of saluk. They get something called fanai nafs. Oh, but just I want to show you. What is the possible outcome if a person puts in that effort? You know, like a person will say that if I spend four years in university, five years in medical school, five years in general surgery, four years, then I can become a neurosurgeon. So they show him the possible outcome to give him some incentive, right? 14, 15 years, and you can cut somebody's head open and hmm, burst out, sew their brain. Hmm? Oh, but but just like that, 14, 15, 20, 30 years of zikr and saluk, and fanai nafs. What happens at fanai nafs? Fanai kaw, the first step, they don't do sin. Fanai nafs means they don't even want sin. Oh, but they're no longer tempted to do sin. Now the nafs is funny. What does it mean? This is the meaning. This one mashayat is actually tafsir of Quran. This is the meaning of nafs in mutma'inna. I'll give you a simple example, you'll understand. If you eat a lot of food, right? So one day somebody made one dish for you. 
you were also hungry and you ate and you ate you can tell they were they were hysterically full stomach full full to the brim I don't know there are many funny jokes about this but they will lay out there but you're full to the brim no space left for the air and all that stuff right full to the brim at that moment at that very moment Somebody brings a tray of your favorite food. You don't feel interested. You don't even have the slightest interest in that because you're full. You're not even this much tempted to take even one bite. That's fine enough. That's not so mutmainnah. That's that person's nafs who is so mutmain on deen. That's what the maladi of the mardiya. Their nafs has become so mutmain, so radiya, pleased on what is pleasing to Allah. They're full to the brim with being pleased with what is pleasing to Allah. When something that is displeasing to Allah is placed in front of them, opportunity of sin, they feel no inclination for it, zero temptation for sin. That's what it means to have nafs mutmain. That's the person that I told you earlier. Allah says, This is called benignness. So that means that Likr Kathir took that person who had nafs amara, you know, in the nafs amara bisui, that the nafs used to command him, the nafs was king. And now the nafs has become slave. The nafs has become Abdullah. This is nafs mutmainna. This is called benignness. Allah Akbar. Doesn't even feel tempted to do so. This is the power of zikr in our deen. This is the power of zikr in our deen. But to do zikr in kathir, don't think. It's just your free time. Do zikr of Allah Ta'ala in your free time. Allah Ta'ala said in Quran, فَإِذَا فَلَغْتَ Quran says Allah Ta'ala, when you become free, hmm? when you're free, we should be embarrassed. Mm. Ya Allah, why did you have to say this? You know, the mother tells her son that, Oh son, whenever you're free, come help me. The good son will say, Oh my mother, what are you saying? What do you mean whenever I'm free? I'm free for you now. The big. I'm always free for you. You don't have to do react of anything else in my life. I'm your son. Oh my mother, what did I do that made you talk to me like this whenever I'm free? Why are you saying that to me whenever you are free? You have been ashamed. And Allah Ta'ala is saying to his servants in the Quran, فَإِذَا فَلَبْتَ Go, go do your job, do your career, do your degree, do your work. But when you are free, and I can even say إِذَا فَلَبْتَ Whenever you are free. Whensoever you are free. Every single time you become free. فَنْسَبْ You should become strong. Have resolved, be steadfast. What Allah love become? It's another beautiful word of Quran. You know this word love become. Allah, Allah is saying, I'm your love. You know, a person today, a human being, comes and tells you, and says to you, I am yours. Your heart will melt. So look how much this person loves me. <laughs> They're saying, I am yours. Allah <laughs> Into your rub, your rub. Father, you should turn to him in yearning and in passion. If only we could realize that. If only when Allah Ta'ala could say, Rubbaka, we could say, Ya Allah, Abduka. When Allah Ta'ala says to us, I am your rub, we could respond, Allah, I am your rub. But even more than a Korbian does it, but Allah Ta'ala's first and last, when Allah Ta'ala says, Rubbaka, you come back and say, Allah, Allah, Allah says, I am your love. You say, I am your servant. 
And second way is when Allah Ta'ala says, Rabbaka, I am your Rabb, you turn back and you say, Rabbi, you are my Rabb. Yes. Allah Ta'ala from Hatay Quran, I am your Rabb, I am your Rabb. In the prayer, what did Subhan al-Rabbi al-Adeem. Sajda mein kya sikhaya? Subhan al-Rabbi. Rabbi. My Rabb. It's mine. That Subhan, that wonderful, amazing, al-Adeem, al-Aqlagab. He's Rabbi, he's my Rabb. That's the feeling of zikr. Tal-Quluni al-Qulqum. Wash-Quluni wa la-Takfuroon. وآخر دعونا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين